Fruitless Crocheters, it's Janie here for the last time as far as the Fruit Garden Crochet Along is concerned, uh, for the last time for now anyway, um, as we are now at the final part of the design and you can head over to the Starcraft website now and download part 8 of the patterns. As always they're available in UK and US terms and in the Dutch language. So this week what you're going to do, or over the next couple of weeks, you're going to finish off your acanthus motifs. You're just going to do one short row on each side of that and one round, the whole way round. That's all you've got to do on each of them. I say that's all you've got to do, I think compared to um, the other week, possibly last time when it was all a bit tricky, I hope you'll find this bit a little bit easier. Um, so once you've made your acanthus motifs, you can then make the whole thing into a frame joining in your dianthus and your carnation motifs and then you can join the main part of the blanket together, put the central panel into that outside frame. And then once you've done that, what you're going to do is do a border the whole way around. And the forthcoming video that I've done for you shows you how to work the two parts of the acanthus motif and how to do some of the bits on the border. Um, there's a few little bits that I thought might you might find useful. So um, I'm kind of sad that we're at the end of the crochet along um, but I am excited because we're going to do it all over again in September. Um, the reason we've done that, the reason we've launched again is because so many people across the world didn't manage to get yarn kits and didn't have enough yarn at home to work through the project so we didn't want people to be disappointed so we decided that we would launch the crochet along again in the autumn. Um, do keep an eye on that. I know lots of you have made lots of different colourways yourself anyway, but I have designed a new colourway. It's kind of duck eggy colours, um, minty greens and peachy colours, um, which is another one of May's favourite, May Morris's favourite palettes. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to show you that blanket and I will be doing that within the next couple of weeks. So there will be another video where I show the blanket to you. Um, what I've also been doing is I've actually designed um, two cushion covers in these two colourways, um, in the original Recipe 1 and Recipe 2 colourways, um, which will help you use up your oddments left over from the club, and um, from the cowl rather, and you'll just need to add in a few more colours. It's a really nice project if you're stash busting as well, if you want to just play around with some of your colourways. So as soon as those are out, I'll obviously let you know about those um, and I hope you'll all join in. Um, that's it really from me. I've just got a couple of things I want to say, to tell you about. Um, one is that today also sees the launch of um, my pattern for the Climbing Rose Wrap. Um, I've just got the samples here to show you. Um, it's a wrap that I designed based on William Morris's work as opposed to May Morris's work and it was run as a crochet along back in um, 2019 last summer. It's a wrap project, not, not a blanket project, but you could make it into a blanket if you wanted to. There is a dedicated Facebook group if you want to go and have a look. Um, but as I say, the patterns for that launch today and they are available as paper patterns or as downloads via Ravelry and Etsy. And it's a 16 page pattern written in UK and US terms. Okay, so then the other thing that I wanted to tell you about is my brand new catalog, um, which you can download from the Janie Crow website. We made this catalog to showcase all my um, back catalog of designs. And it's just really nice for me to see all the blankets and projects in home settings um, and I think it gives you all a better idea of what my um, back catalogue of designs looks like. Um, so as I say you can go on the website and download that for free and we will have paper copies in the future that we'll put into um, parcels as we send them out as well. And obviously if we ever get to do shows and workshops again we will have them there as well. Let's hope, fingers crossed, that that's not too far away in the future. Um, so the final thing I want to say to you is it'd be really lovely if you'd head over to my website and join my mailing list. I send a weekly newsletter if I can and from next month what I'm going to do is send out a monthly video as well. So I'll send a link to a video 
where I actually, because I've got used to doing videos now, I quite like talking to you all, so I thought I'd do a monthly video where I talk about what I've been up to and show you my new projects, hopefully if I get some more designed in the next few months or so. Um, so I hope you'll have a look at that, that will come every month. And then the other thing we thought we'd do is we'd do a monthly question and answer session as well. So if you've got anything you want to know about, if you want to know about my design process, if there's any little crochet tips that you fancy learning, um, like beading or anything that you fancy, if you drop us an email, then we can include that in the monthly question and answer session. Um, so that's it for me. I, I'm just absolutely blown away by what you've all done over the last... 14, 15 weeks while we've all been in lockdown. It's been a tough time for a lot of you, I know. And I know from your feedback that the crochet along has kept a lot of you going. And I'm really, I mean, some of the emails that you've sent have just been amazing. And I'm so happy to have been a part of something positive for all of you. And um, as I say, I really look forward to doing it all again come, oh, I've gone a bit teary there, that made me a little bit emotional. Um, but I'm really looking forward to starting it all over again come the autumn. And um, if you're looking for a project in the meantime, if you want to get stuck into something between now and September, then you may like to head over and have a look at the pattern for the climbing rose. Um, that's it for me, guys. Um, I'm sending you loads of love and I hope you're all well and that you're continuing to keep safe. So you're going to start by working a short row at the top of your acanthus motif. Uh, when I say the top, I mean the short end here. And you're gonna do just one row, and it starts over here. If you can see that there, it starts here where my tail end is. And you're gonna make a new corner there a chain space, a chain space, then you're at the middle and you're going to do three double crochet, chain space and then your next corner and it's as simple as that, it's a really quick little short row and that starts to give the piece the um, rectangular shape. So I'm going to talk you through how to do that, you're going to do it at that end and then you're going to turn your piece and do it at the other end as well so you can see it there. Okay, so I'm going to show you that first and then you've just got one round to do. That's all you've got to do and your acanthus motif will be finished. So this is what your acanthus motif should have looked like at the end of the last set of patterns. And you should have um, a chain space with a stitch marker in it. And that is where you're going to start this short row. So I can see where I'm going to go. So I'm going to take that stitch marker out and I'm using a four millimeter hook because I'm on recipe one and I'm gonna use caramel. If you're on recipe two, then you'll be on a size smaller hook and you'll be using dusk, the lighter blue of the two. So I'm gonna put my hook into that chain space and join my yarn in by doing one chain and a double. So I've done a double into that first chain space. Okay. okay, so I'm ready to go. I've done my first double, so that's US single. I'm going to do three chain and then I'm going to do a treble into this next chain space, which actually looks like the corners from all previous motifs. I'm doing a treble into there, then I'm doing three chain and a treble into the same place. And that chain space that I've just made becomes my next corner. So if you want to at that point, you can then put your stitch marker into that new chain space. Okay. Then I'm going to do three chain. One, two, three. And then into that same chain space, which is here, I'm going to do a double treble. So it's twice around the hook into that same chain space and bring up the double treble. Okay, so now we're going to skip a few chain spaces and we're actually going to go into, we're going to skip this one and this one and I'm going to put my hook into the first stitch of those double crochet that we made into that chain space the last time. So I've put my yarn around the hook twice because I'm going to do a double treble and I'm going to go into that first double crochet there and do a double treble. 
So there we go, I've done two double trebles on the bounce. Then I'm going to do five chain, one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to skip three of these double crochet stitches. So I'm going to skip, can you see them there? One, two, three, and I'm going to do a double crochet into the next one. A double crochet into the next one, and that will be the one at the top of the acanthus leaf that you've previously made. And a double crochet into the next one. So there I'm at my halfway point, easily, I'm beyond it actually. So now I'm going to do that in reverse. I mean obviously I don't crochet in reverse, I do the pattern in reverse. So it's five chain, one, two, three, four and five. A double treble into that last double crochet there. One, two, three, like that. Then I'm going to skip this chain space and this chain space and do a double treble into that corner. Can you see that's the corner one? So I'm going in here double treble, three chain, one, two, three, and then into that same chain space I'm doing a treble, three chain, one, two, three, and into the same chain space again, another treble, there we go, so that will be my next corner there, then it's three chain, one, two, three, and I'm going to finish by doing a double crochet into that next chain space. So there's my final double. I'm just going to do one chain to finish that off and cut my yarn end. And I'm just going to pull that through. I don't need to do another chain because I've already done the chain, so I'm just going to pull that through and finish off. So that is what it should look like at the end of that short row. So now I'm going to work the final round onto the acanthus motif. I'm going to break the tutorial up into pieces so it's easier for you to follow. So the first thing I'm going to do is join my yarn into the marked chain space and I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually take that out again because I've I know where I want to go so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to join in there by working one chain. Okay, now almost always when we've joined in, we've joined in by doing the first stitch as a double crochet, but this time I'm actually going to do two half trebles, that's the first thing I'm going to do. So into the same chain space I'm doing yarn on the hook and doing two half trebles, and just like you've done before, just pull that tail end out like that. So this is going to be a corner, so that's my two half trebles, then I'm going to do a treble, there we go, that will be my corner stitch, and two more half trebles into that same chain space. So that one's now full up, that's going to be my corner, so it was two half trebles, a treble, and two half trebles. So now I'm going into the next chain space, and I'm going to do three double crochet, one, two and three into that one and a half treble. Okay, so that one has four stitches in, it's three doubles and a half treble. That's the next chain space. So then I can see I've got a gap between my two double trebles that I made on the previous round and I'm going to do a treble into that stitch space between those two. It wasn't a chain space, it's a stitch space and don't worry if it's big like mine is, you're just going to pop a treble into there. Okay, so now you're into your next chain space and you're going to do a half treble into that next one and then you're going to do four double crochet. One, two, three and four. And that brings you to the three double crochet at the centre of this motif. So you're going to do one double into the first one, like that, two into the next one, like 
that and one into the next one okay so then I'm going to reverse the pattern and work along the rest of this so it's going to be four double crochet one two three and four into that next chain space and we finish that chain space with a half treble there we go into that stitch space I'm going to do a treble like that and then I'm up to my next chain space and I'm going to start by doing a half treble into that next chain space and three double crochet one two and three okay so then now this is my next corner chain space although it hasn't got a marker in it I just know that it's my corner one. Oh, sorry I just moved the light slightly there and into this corner chain space I'm going to do two half trebles one two a treble like that and two more oh, two more half trebles one and two okay so then I'm into my final little bit here I'm just reaching the end of the round and I'm going to do a half treble into the next treble so that's actually into the stitch this time half treble into there and three half trebles into the next chain space so this is the final chain space of that short row so one and two and three and now I've reached my very last stitch that was the last stitch of the short row and I'm going to do a double crochet. You can see I haven't sewn my ends in. I'm going to do one double crochet into that final stitch and that finishes that part of that round. So you can see I've made a corner into here with five stitches then I've worked along and filled up all these chain spaces and created another corner over the other side. So you can see that I'm now working along the straight edge, the long straight edge here and the first thing I'm going to do, so this is the second paragraph of round 14, the first thing I'm going to do is do a treble into that chain space, the very next one, it's not the one after here that's between my fingers there, it's the very first chain space you can see, you've already used some of it on the previous short row and that's the same chain space that I'm going to use now. So I'm going to use a do it. Sorry, I'm going to do a treble into that same chain space, and that treble should come up the height of those two double crochets that are on top of each other. So then I'm going to do one treble into the next stitch, and then I've reached a chain space. I've reached the little chain space that was done into the same chain space previously. Sorry, the same chain space, but yes, that there was a chain space that you made into the same one, does that make sense? It's that little one that sits behind the pico of that leaf and into there I'm going to do a half treble and then I'm going to find the leaf, it's the bit that's still sort of left free here that hasn't been touched on that final acanthus leaf that's still a bit free range. You're going to find that top pico there and put a double crochet into the pico and that holds that down into place there then and then what that's done is that's then pulled the leaf into place but it's covered up that same chain space behind so just find that chain space again and do a half treble into there that same chain space so what I've done there is I did a treble into the same stitch into the next stitch then into the next chain space I did a half treble then I did a double crochet into the top of the pico on the leaf and a half treble into that same stitch. Sorry, same chain space. So now I'm working along the double crochet stitches that have previously been made on that previous round um, that you did last time. And the first one here is just behind the leaf there, just kind of sitting next to the leaf. And I'm going to do a half treble into that one 
that's my first stitch so I'm not missing the first stitch like you have done a lot you're doing a half treble into there then I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches so that's one two three four five six seven just pull my yarn seven eight and nine so now I'm going to do two together so it's DC two together which is single crochet two together in US terms so I'm going to go into that first stitch into the second one draw two loops up like that and then go through all three loops so that's a DC two together I'm then going to do one double crochet into each of the next three stitches one two three and then another two together okay so now I'm at the point where I've got some bracketed text I've got to do four stitches then two together and I've got to do that twice so I'm going to do a double crochet into each of the next four and two together then I'm going to do that again one two three four and two together and that completes that repeat so it's one double crochet into each of the next three stitches and then I'm going to do my final two together along that side so it's DC two together and then one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches so that's three four five six seven eight and nine and you should have one stitch left at the end there one double crochet and you're going to do a half treble in to that one so now I'm at the point where I want to catch my leaf in again I've met that next chain space so I'm going to do a half treble into that next chain space a double crochet into the top of the picot on that leaf and a half treble into that same chain space that's now behind the leaf okay and that's anchored the picot down so then I'm going to do a treble into the next stitch and a treble into the next chain space now this is the chain space where you previously started your short row so you're going to do one treble into there like that and then you're going to do one double crochet into the next stitch and that's the first stitch of that short row so it's a double into there okay so that's pulled that into place and then you do three half trebles into this next chain space one two and three and then you're going to do a half treble into the next treble into the stitch so you're not going to go into the chain space here you're going to go into that stitch there okay and now I'm at my corner so I'm going to do two half trebles a treble and two half trebles into that next corner and that completes one repeat of the pattern so um, I would then be at this, the end of the second paragraph of round 14 so once I've done this corner which is two half trebles a treble and two half trebles I'm now at the point where I'm going to do a repeat of that whole round um, repeat of that whole round a repeat of the whole instructions that are in the pattern so I'm going to work along this short edge and then along the longer edge doing exactly what I've just done until I meet that next corner. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll show it to you at the end once I've done it. 
So here is the completed motif. I've done the repeat so that I've worked along the other short edge and along the long end edge. And at this point you just want to measure um, and um, place your markers in. So you're going to put a marker in at each corner stitch. So that will be the treble that's in the middle of those five stitches at the corner. So just put a stitch marker into each of those corner stitches and that will make it easier for when you come to join it up. Um, it's worth just checking that you have joined in each of your picots at the end of the acanthus leaves otherwise they will sort of flap up and you don't really need to block it at this point but I know if you're worried about it and you think it's a bit wobbly then you could give it a quick block but don't overstretch it, don't do a really mad sort of stretchy thing um, and you're going to start putting things together so um, there's pictures in the pattern as to how you um, start to join up your pieces and the next thing I'm going to show you is how to work the edging, the border, along the whole of the outside of the blanket. So once you've joined your central panel together, you should put a marker into the corner stitch of the dianthus motif. I'm a few rows on from there, which is why I've got this bit of crochet here. But you're going to put a marker into the corner of the dianthus piece, and then you're going to do a whole round using your base colour. So I've used caramel because I'm on recipe one and at the corner here I've done the corners that you all got used to. I've done one half treble, a treble and a half treble to create a corner on that first round. Um, and then once you've done your first round in your base colour, so if you're in recipe two you will have used dusk, you then do two more rounds increasing by three stitches at each corner. So I've done a round using blue haze and then I've done a round using parchment. Now it's at that point, once that round there is done, that the pattern changes slightly depending on whether you're doing recipe one or recipe two. The reason being, in recipe one at this point, I'm only using parchment, I'm doing two rounds in parchment. On recipe two, you'll do one round using thyme and one round using celery. On this round, which is round, um, what have I done? I've done round four. That's the round where I've done one double crochet into a stitch, done one chain, and then skipped a stitch. So that you can see along there, I've got one double, skipped a stitch, done a chain, and then one double. And I've done that the whole way round. And at the corner, into the marked corner stitch, I've got one double crochet, one chain and one double crochet. So regardless of whether you're doing recipe one or two, that's the stitch formation. The stitch formation doesn't change depending on your recipe, it just means you change colour. So um, on this one I'm using parchment, on recipe two I would have used thyme and then parchment. So what I should have said at the end of the last little bit was that your recipe two, you're using thyme and then celery, not thyme and then parchment. Sorry about that, made a bit of a boo-boo there. Um, okay, so now I'm on round five and this is the same regardless of whether you're on recipe one or recipe two, it's just a colour change that's different. If you're doing recipe one, you're using cranberry. If you're using recipe two, then you're doing you're going to be using raisin, which is the kind of purpley colour. I'm going to find the chain space that was made between the two double crochet at the corner and join my yarn in at that point there by doing one chain. Then I'm going to work three double crochet into that same chain space. So that's one and two and three. So that's going to be my corner there. I'm just going to pull that tail out like we have done all the way through, pull the tail out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do working along this next side edge is I'm going to skip the next stitch, which is a double crochet, and working over the top of the chain that I made previously, I'm going to do two double crochet into that skipped stitch, which is two rows down, it's here. So I'm going to do two double crochet into that skipped stitch so that I'm working 
over the top of the previous row. So then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to miss the next double crochet, go down into the previous round and do two double crochet down there. And I'm going to do that the whole way along. So I skip the next stitch, go down into that next round and do two doubles. So you're sort of pulling up a slightly longer stitch than normal, like that. And that gives you this lovely effect there of a zigzag. So you're not going into the chain space, you're not going here like that, you're going down into that next round and doing two kind of deep stitches, two deep double crochets down to give you this nice kind of zigzag V shape stitch effect. So this is the edging at the end of round five. I've got two double crochet into each of those skipped stitches that were made previously. And then at the corner, there's three double crochet into the corner chain space. And that gives you this lovely zigzag effect. I really like that. Um, so then I'm now gonna show you the, um, the next round. And there's a little thing I want to just tell you about this before we start. So this is the completed border on recipe one and I just wanted to show you what I've done here. Um, because I'm making the blanket and being very conscious about yarn use at the same time, I was a little bit concerned when I started the border that if I completely used um, denim the whole way round that I might run out of denim yarn. Um, so what I decided to do was actually use blue haze in the corner here for these five repeats of the wave. Um, I think it gives the corner a nice definition because it's just that little bit darker there. Um, but I do think you're probably going to have enough denim if you do want to just keep going with the denim when you do the wave stitch. On colour recipe two, I didn't change colour at the corner. So this is again why the um, pattern has two differences there depending on what colour way you're going to do. Um, so as I said, you can use denim throughout, I think, if you um, want to play yarn chicken, then you can give it a go, but I'm pretty sure you'll be all right if you want to use denim the whole way. If not, you're just going to do these five repeats using blue haze. So this is now round six, and it's on this round that you're going to make the wave stitch. And you'll notice that I've changed my hook. I've gone down to a 3.5 millimeter hook. And that's because when you do um, stitches with a long post, like double trebles, you get, actually you can see how open that is. Um, and that can make it a bit wavy if you're not careful. I mean, I mean that your actual fabric goes wavy, not that your stitches create a wave. Um, so just make sure that you've gone down to your smaller hook size. And also when you're doing this round, it's really important that you start working in the right position. So you're going to start by working into the 114th stitch along the side edge. And you start off by doing um, an increase as well. So just make sure that you've done that. Um, I'm going to show you the repeat of the pattern that is between the brackets so you can get an idea of how this wave stitch is made. I've actually already done three double crochet here. Um, to get me to the right point. So to build up the side of the wave I'm going to do a half treble into the next stitch, a treble into the next stitch and then I'm going to do a double treble into each of the next three stitches. So it's yarn on the hook twice, a double treble and again a double treble and one more, a double treble, so that's three double trebles. Then, because I've got to the height of my wave, I'm going to come back down in size. So it's a treble into the next stitch, a half treble into the next stitch, and then it's one double crochet into each of the next three. And that has created my next wave. 
So I'm going to do one more of those. just need to pull my denim a little bit. Oh, I'll keep bashing my light today. Okay, so I'm going to do that repeat again. So it's a half treble and a treble. This is getting me up in height. So then it's three double trebles. One. Two. And three. That gets me to the height of that wave. Then it's back down a treble, a half treble, and three doubles. Okay, so that shows the repeat. You'll see my waves there. Um, but I'm also approaching the corner here, um, and I am at the equivalent of having completed the eight repeats. Um, although I shouldn't have, perhaps I shouldn't have those last three stitches in. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting towards the corner and this is the point at which if I was going to, I'd change to blue haze. I'm just going to have a little look. Um, so we change to blue haze on the final step of the last half treble after this, this one here actually, so it would be here. Um, so if I take that back, this is my last half treble after that one there and on the final pull through which would be at that point that is where I would then bring in the blue haze to complete the next repeats okay so then I'm going to do three double crochet in blue haze okay I'm just leaving those tails there together and do my next wave using blue haze one, two, and three, and then back down, one, two, and the three. So I'm nearing my corner, you can see I've done one repeat now in the blue haze, so I'm nearing my corner and I'm just going to do that off camera and show you what happens at the corner because you need to do a bit of an increase there. So I've just done another repeat in the blue off camera, that's the one I've just done there and I'm nearing my corner, I'm two stitches away actually from the corner, the marked corner stitch, up to you whether you put a marker in or not. Um, so then I'm going to do, I've just done my three double crochet, I'm going to do a half treble into the next one and a treble into the, my next one and then this is my corner stitch now, so I'm going to do five double trebles all into that same stitch. So that's one and two and three and four. Turn the corner a little bit. Four and five. All into that same stitch. So that's five double trebles all into the corner stitch there. And then I'm going to continue in the pattern, so I'm going back down, I'm doing a treble, a half treble, oops, just split that one, a half treble, and three doubles, two, three. So that's what it should look like at the corner, and I'm just going to carry on all the way round, and then show you the next round. So this is what my edging is looking like at the end of that round. You'll see I've got this nice big rounded corner here and I've got my tails here and here where I've changed yarn colour. Up to you if you want to do that. As I say, I think you'll probably be alright if you want to stick to denim. Um, but I just wanted to show you what that corner looks like before we go on to the next part of the pattern. I'm on round seven and I'm using rows and if you're using recipe two, if you're doing recipe two, it will be rows as well. So it's the pinky colour regardless of which colourway you're doing. And I'm at my corner here and I'm going to join my yarn into the top of the third double treble at that corner. You've probably put a marker in yours, I have asked you to put markers, it's up to you if you do. 
um, I've just removed my marker so I'm going to put my hook into the top of that central double treble and do one chain and that just gets me in and then to create the corner at this point I'm going to do a half treble and a treble and a half treble all into that central stitch and that's going to create my corner on the next round. Okay. So now I'm kind of doing a reverse wave stitch in that I want to fill in this gap that's been left by the wave. So where there's a small stitch on the round before, I'm going to do a long stitch. And where there's a long stitch on the round before, I'm going to do a short stitch. So from this point here, the repeat, or not the repeat, but what I'm going to do is one double crochet into each of the next two. And that accounts for the two remaining double crochet from the round before. Then I'm going to do a half treble into the next one, a treble into the next one, and a double treble into each of the next three. And these will be on top of the three doubles that I did on the previous round. So it's one and two and so you'll see that starts to even out the length, the height of the stitches. So then I'm going to do a treble and then a half treble and I've reached the top of the wave from the previous round so I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next three and then I start again filling in that wave stitch. So I'm going to do that the whole way round so that I've got a nice flat edge there for the next round and that I've filled in all the waves as I've gone along. So at the corner then it's a half treble, a treble and a half treble and then you start your wave repeat. So this shows the border at the end of round seven. You'll see it's still a little bit wavy, but you'll also see that you've filled in the waves on the previous round. You can see on mine that I've got the darker blue at the corner. Um, but as I said, as I've said a lot of times, that's up to you. Um, and I've just put a stitch marker into that corner stitch there, which is the central treble of the three stitches at the corner. Um, so what I should have said as well is that that last round was done on the smaller hook. Um, so just make sure you change down on that round. Um, on the next round, which is round 8, you'll be going back to the larger hook. So just make sure you change back to either a 4mm if you're doing recipe 1 or a 3.5mm if you're doing recipe 2. This is my piece at the end of round 8, which I've used parchment for. If you're doing recipe 2, you will have used pumice and that was done on the larger size hook. And you'll see that this round has actually flattened everything out and made it just a bit straighter here along that top edge and along each side. Um, at the corner you've done three, I've done, or you will have done, three double crochet into the corner stitch there. Um, yeah, three double crochet into the corner stitch. So now at the end of that round, which is round eight, before you start round nine, I ask you to put a stitch marker into the corner but you're actually going to move the corner around by a stitch and the reason being is that if you're always mark making your corner into the same equivalent of the same stitch you start to get a bit of a bias going on in that the stitches move around it's just the nature of crochet so when you put this stitch marker in instead of going into the middle one there I'm actually going to go into the third of the three and that will donate, donate, what's that word? That will show my next corner. So can you see it's just one off from the centre and that will be my corner on the next round. Okay, so we're into the home straight now. So I'm going to do the next round off camera and show that to you and um, then we're very nearly done. I'm coming to the end of round nine. I've done my corner stitches. I've done a half treble, a treble and a half treble into the third stitch of those three. 
I couldn't find the right word at all, could I? I was trying to find the word indicate and not donate. I don't know where that even came from. Um, on the previous bit, so just make sure you've done your corner into the third stitch and that just straightens everything up nicely. And I'm on a 3.5 millimeter hook for that whole round. Um, so just make sure that you've done the same and that you've changed. And I'm just coming up to where I started here. So I'm just gonna do my last couple of stitches on that round because I want to show you what you're going to do at the beginning of the next round. So I've done my whole round and I'm just going to do my slip stitch at the end of that round to finish off. There we go. And that was done on my 3.5 millimeter hook. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make that loop nice and big. Just really big so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. And then you're going to turn your crochet over. I'm just going to, I'm using a sample so it's a bit more difficult to see than yours should be. So there we go, I've turned it round. I'm going to get rid of the 3.5 millimeter hook and pick up my four, my bigger one again. And I'm going to put my hook in to the stitch from this side, so we're at the back now, but I'm going to put my hook in below that round through from the front of the work and put that loop on my hook and then just tighten it and draw that through to this side. And the reason we've done that is that we're now going to do a round of slip stitches along the whole of that last round. So that I'm going into every stitch, drawing through and just doing a slip stitch into every stitch. You can do that the whole way round. And that gives you a really nice edge then. Um, and you're on a bigger hook because slip stitches tend to be a bit tight. Um, I'll just do a couple more. There we go. So you can see that even on the back of the work now I've got the appearance of a chain so that when I look at both sides it looks like a nice neat edge. So here I am with the finished blanket in front of me and um, I just wanted to show you that nice edge there it gives you so on the back I didn't think it showed it all that well last time it gives you this really nice edge so that on both sides you've got that nice chain it's almost like a double chain on well it is a double chain on the edge there it almost looks like a rope edging so here you are at the end of your project you've been through all my hours of tutorials and all your hours of amazing crochet and I hope that over the course of your project you've learned a lot of new techniques and that you've really enjoyed your crochet journey with me. Um, I've, it's been amazing and um, I really look forward to doing it all again in the autumn if you fancy joining me. And as I said in my introduction, I'm going to say it again. In the meantime, I hope you all stay safe and well and I'll see you soon.